I find your ability to overcome adversity has very much driven the way you do politics. I am very happy that I decided to make this leap into municipal government. Weren't you a television star as well? <laughs> Why, yes, Sterling, as a matter of fact. I, I love this story. What do you love about volunteering Like that makes you want to kind of keep doing it? There's an inkling of, well, I got to help there. Or right. I want to be part of that. But you, you are a twin, are you not? I am a twin, yes. yeah. If you could describe your journey in Ajax Council in three words, uh, what would they be and why? Whew. Welcome to another episode of TOA Talks, the Town of Ajax podcast, where we get to meet fascinating individuals. Uh, my name is Sterling Lee. I'll be your host today. And with me, I, we have a very, very special guest, uh, my friend, uh, Lisa Bauer. Lisa, how are you doing? Hello. Good morning. I'm uh, doing great. How are you? I'm wonderful. Lisa, you were the counselor for Ward 3. This is your sixth year, correct? Correct. How's it feel so far? What have you learned? What have I learned yeah. and how do I feel? I feel great. Right. I am very happy that I decided to make this leap into municipal government uh, because I had never thought that I would do this. Right. So I feel like I have learned a ton. I felt like I was going back to school. Um, I have learned that there are many issues that uh, our residents are passionate about and they want to be engaged and involved. And there's so much involved in being a, a member of council. Uh, if so wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, you were actually, uh, you were born and raised kind of in Ajax, uh, then you went to Toronto, right? Right, so I was born here right. at the hospital. My parents, my mom's doctor was out here. So, um, but I was, ra I was, I lived and was raised in, in Toronto. North York, yeah, okay. near uh, Don Mills and McNichol area. Then you made it back to Ajax. And then I moved here, we went, we came back here in 1999, when I had my second child, my daughter, Emma, and we were hoping to buy a house at that point. Okay. And we just, we couldn't afford to live in Toronto. So uh, we did not want to go out west, so we came out east and we stopped in Ajax. Uh, was it, was, was the option going to Mississauga or Ajax or like, um, you were kind of shopping Yeah, around? well, yeah, we thought about either west to Mississauga or maybe a little north to Aurora, but there was something that drew... A little us. north? Yeah. Aurora is like super north. <laughs> that yeah. drew us to the East End, and, and Ajax was our first choice. Um, so you were um, kind of in uh, Toronto for your formative years for a lot of it, and then, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, weren't you a television star as well? <laughs> Why, yes, Sterling, as a matter of fact, I, I love was. this story. So, so tell, no, tell us about this. Say I'm far from a star. No, I, I was told you have, a, you have a star in the Canadian Walk of Fame. Oh, yeah. I, really? I'd yeah. like to know where it is. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, so my, my parents were, my mom in particular, was really involved uh, in the community and just getting us kids. Like uh, I have three sisters, so there were four of us. We're all two years apart. And um, she just wanted to get us into all kinds of activities and things. And of course she can't, we didn't have a lot of money, so uh, she couldn't just throw us at camp and things right. like that. So she did find a choir, Canadian Children's Choir it was called. And um, so we all joined that and there was like a hundred kids or so and we sang at, you know, the opening anthem at um, the exhibition or at cool. concerts or we were on TV shows like there was a show called the Tommy Hunter Show. And so all those things we did, which just led to uh, doing commercials and voiceovers. And, and then it led to um, a show called Kids World, which was kind of like a like a news type story where children would interview other children about their special some, you know, things that they knew how to do or that, that right. they were involved in. So I was a host of a show called Kids World. You were a host? I was a co-host. There was four of us. There was uh, Mark Goslin, Keith Singer, Amber Pay Payee, and me. Uh, I, I, we don't do you keep in touch with them? No, we don't. But right. you got to so look them up on apart. Facebook. I don't, I don't see. I tried Googling them. Uh, Amber Pay stayed in that industry. She works. Last I knew, she was a traffic reporter or news reporter news reporter or something like that on city city tv okay uh but mark and keith i don't know what what became of them but it would have been nice actually in in hindsight we should have kept in touch so did you beat your other sisters out for that audition no they didn't audition for that okay there was one commercial for um uh ontario place the children's village that two of my sisters i wanted to be in that one too but i didn't get it but my other two sisters did 
Nice. So. Yeah. Uh, and just one last point that your sister is interesting about you. You are a twin, are you not? I am a twin, yes. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people know that. Fraternal twins. So I have an older sister, Wendy, a younger sister, Leslie, and then my other sister is Tina. So Tina and I are twins. We're five minutes apart. She's older. Fraternal. Uh, so it was kind of fun, like growing up in elementary and high school especially, where everybody just thought we were best friends because we were always together, right. but we were sisters. Um, do you have that twin link? Yes. So it's like if she's in distress, do you feel that and be like, I have to help her? Kind of like Luke uh, and yeah. Leia in Star Wars. So, I know, Wonder Twin powers, right? activate. So actually, yes, we do. It's not all the time, but there was one time in particular, so I was probably maybe in my late 20s, early 30s, and I worked downtown at that time at the bank, and I was on my lunch break outside, sitting on the steps. You saw I'll just go get street meat and then sit on the steps. And I had been feeling kind of off all day, but I couldn't pinpoint why. So I was just sitting there, I'm like, what is wrong? Like, it just was weird, because I'm usually pretty good at figuring out, you sure. know, what's wrong or whatever. And then I learned, I won't go into the details, but I learned that something terrible had happened with my sister. That's crazy. And I was like, that is exactly why that. you felt that way like it was it wasn't like oh something feels off it was like something is wrong like you had dread yeah oh, so my I, I learned later it was because of what was happening with my sister and i know that that was a so um a when you thing. um so you you actually um had a, a, a pretty serious fight against cancer right yes i did. did did she feel that inversely did you ever talk to her be like did you feel that i was kind of sick or off uh i never asked her those questions sure. but so uh, in 2010, I was diagnosed with cancer. It was a long story. It was kind of crazy. Um, and I ended up from the doctor's office to the ER to being admitted. And uh, so you're not, you're not planned or prepared for any of that. Right, right. It's right near Emma's birthday. There was so much social and family stuff going on. You just kind of, it all falls away. So luckily I have such a great, strong uh, support network with family and friends. So I, was, I ended up being in the hospital for 77 days. Wow. Which might sound like, oh, 77 is nothing. but The it's, parking alone is right? astronomical. 11 weeks. I used to, uh, they asked me to speak at my kid's school when I got home. Like after, I lost my voice too. So once I was, you know, better, I was like, so to put it in perspective for the kids, I was like, that's like all of summer break and more. Yeah. And that's when the kids are like, wow, right? So I lost my voice. The cancer was all here. It was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay. Um, so I had to have a trach too. I lost my voice, lost my hair, all that stuff that cancer uh, can cause. Um, so my sisters, God love them, uh, came to visit me every day. So they had to pay a lot for parking. Yeah, I was going to say, sure. hopefully they carpooled. Yeah, yeah, they did. Okay. So there's a couple of funny stories because you, you really try hard not to feel down or of course depressed. Not. And you you're scared but you don't want to show your kids especially that you're scared and I how just, old are your kids at this point so at that time so it was 2010 so emma would have just turned 11 okay and gav would have been 15. so it was pretty scary so it was know. pretty young yeah. and, and luckily um you know our we have some wonderful neighbors so gav was playing football at that time so you know his coach and friends really helped him through that and emma had all her little girlfriends and, you know, family, et cetera. But, and I remember when I first entered the hospital, so I have um, four nieces and nephews on my, my, on my family side. I have three on the other side. And so one day they all came to visit me. So there were six little kids. Gavin's the oldest, and, and then they go down from there. And my little nephew, Liam, God love him. So... We're sitting there and they're kind of visiting me. I, I look sick. My voice isn't really there. It's still there at the time because it was near the beginning. And he just looks at me and they call me Auntie Lou is my nickname. And he's like, Auntie Lou, are you going to die? Like just so serious, right? And, and that was probably like, because people tend to tread lightly yeah, around course. any person who's suffering a personal illness. So it was kind of nice to be hit in the face like that and to realize, to remember that often children don't have those filter, those filters and right. those guards, right? So it's better. You don't give them, you know, inappropriate or age inappropriate information, but you 
just tell the truth, yeah. right? So, uh, to which I... Some would argue, like, I still don't have that filter. Yeah, by the way, so. <laughs> I no, would argue that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, my question, your question was about my sister. So, teen, we never talked about that twin link. Right. But there was, this, there was a time when... So, I had several different roommates. I was in a semi-private room. And, you know, you end up talking a little bit or hearing their stories. And they would find out mine because I would... Before I lost my voice, I'd be on the phone telling you know people this is what's going on and then I would get a new roommate and then I would get another roommate because they were all getting discharged and I wasn't maybe they didn't care for so, you so yeah they could have asked well, to be moved you. actually you're <laughs> quite right it could have like, been oh gosh it was you never switch. stopped I'm get, fine. Her, Let get me, go me out of here so there was one time in particular where the girl beside me had been in the hospital for a long time and she was telling me about it, and she kept waiting for that okay from the doctor. And then I think she finally got it after, like, 65 days or something like that. So I took that in my mind that, okay, so I just have to wait 65, 65 days, yeah, yeah. and I'm going to get the okay. Like, we did not have the same illness or anything, sure. but it was just that coping thing, right? That right, right. Whole, the optimism. So the 65-day or whatever it was came and went. And, and I was like, heartbroken. Yeah. And so Teen came to visit me. She was on her own that day. And we were sitting there talking. And I'm getting emotional talking about this. And so I was trying to tell her, like, I was so disappointed. And I really thought of, and I'm, I, I don't know. And so she just, she's so smart. My sister is, <laughs> it's quite funny because, like, I'm a chitty chatty. She is not. Uh, I excelled at social studies, social science, arts, English. She's a math, science, yeah. fact person. So we, we helped each other. She went to Western. I went to Trent. I would help her with her essays. She would help me with my math. Like, it was perfect. So she just kind of, and she always drops those wisdom bombs just when you need them. And she's like, no, we're not going to be worried about this. We're going to, we're going to, like, she just had those words. And it was just the Exactly perfect, what you needed. Exactly the message that I needed to hear that day because I was... That day in particular was just awful. Because you just had a goal in your mind, and then it I just thought, oh, it. Yeah. she's getting out. I think she's sicker than me, so I should be getting out. Like that right. kind of stuff, right? So. And it was a bit afterwards, anyways, that you got out, right? Yeah, it was that. So it may not have been sixty-five because I remember whatever the whatever it was. It was sure. I that day lit. I took that as my deadline, and, and then it went by. So. Right. Anyway. No, it's 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 a. I always like that story about you because. Um, yeah, I, I find your ability to overcome adversity has very much uh, driven the way you do politics, if I may. If she's just observing oh, you as a you. peer. Yeah. And just like, yeah, you kind of take on a cause and you have a no, I never say die attitude about it. And you're just like, let's just do this. Like, it's, it's what people need and what they want, right? So, Thank you. You yeah. know what? I have been called a Pollyanna in my life. I have been called naive. I have been called a unicorn. Right. Um, in this game of politics, to put it... You know, that's the blunt side. Um, uh, the way I sometimes interact or deal, uh, I have been, uh, somebody I respect very much said, you know, you are very refreshing to bring that. Like, I'm not trying to brag. <laughs> <laughs> like, sounds like a brand name. What other but nice things are people talking about here? how great I am, yeah. let me tell you. No, but I, um, I think it might be because I have no political inclination. Like, right. I didn't go into this job with any of that. And I never studied, uh, you know, municipal politics per se. Um, I took poli sign. I didn't study right? municipal politics. I didn't, so I don't I think didn't, there's really any kind of yeah, right? uh, textbook for I this. I didn't go in for all of that. There's, there can be. I, I do not like the reputation um, that, politicians, that politicians some people get. give to politicians. I don't, I, I feel that maybe there is some truth to it for some. Sure. Um, I get very, it, it certainly isn't the case uh, for why I do this job. So that that's a tough part. If you ask me about some of the pros and cons, mm -hmm. that would be a con. Being sure. labeled with that, yeah, yeah, yeah. With that broad brush. Um, well, I mean, outside of politics, you also do some really good nonprofit work. I think you've helped Feed the Need, the Canadian Cancer Society, obviously, uh, Girls Inks. Um, so what do you love about volunteering Like that makes you want to kind of keep doing it? Oh. Uh, that came from uh, my parents, particularly my mother. So we just grew up in a house where um, service is, you know, we're here, uh, you know, to live your life and go to school and 
be good people, but it's all about serving others. And I truly believe that. So um, when, I, when I see these great organizations or good causes or things that I'm, where there's an inkling of, well, you know what, that, I gotta help there. Or right. I wanna be part of that. Or let's even just as much as just spreading the word, there's a group that does this. Or why don't you look into this? Or I love when people ask me about volunteering opportunities because there's so much available out there. Right. Right. So in Ajax, especially in, in Ajax, Ajax, region. Yeah. Right. So that came from my parents, uh, who just taught us it's about um, helping others. Great. Yeah. So we've talked about just kind of Lisa, um, the the more kind of serious side that kind of form, formed you as a politician, and then your uh, nonprofit work, your volunteer work. Um, tell me about Lisa, the fun. Lisa Bauer, the fun ah. person. Tell me about you know. Oh what, my what, what do you, what do you What do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? So it's it's Friday, Saturday night. I mean, your kids have left they're the adults, nest, they're so grown. they're adults, yeah. right? So you just you hit the clubs. What do you What do you do? Yeah, you get some bottle exactly. service, you know? Yes. How did you? Know yeah, that? right. But what, what does Lisa do for fun? So it's funny because I really do like I enjoy my um, solitude. Like I like I recharge by just sort of zoning in, and mm -hmm. so. But it turns out. Um, but I really do thrive on, I get that energy from other people too. Right. So I, I don't have a large group of friends, but I have a very solid, uh, loyal group of friends. Um, so Fridays are pretty mellow because you're tired from the work week. You just want to relax. I'm out of my house a lot. So I want to be home with the dog, <laughs> right? Right, right? Catch up on whatever I need to catch up on. But I typically try and socialize. Go for dinner, go on a patio, go to a movie, go... You know, the stuff Are you a live music do. person or you don't like live music? I do love live music. Uh, it's hard to talk when you go to see live music. So when I'm trying to catch up, like I also have right. really solid girlfriend relationships. So those are very important because, you know, you live longer with good friends and with good girlfriends. And if you laugh every day. So I believe that do laughter is the best. Do you consider me one of your good girlfriends? You are one of my good girlfriends. Yes. Still. yes. But, you know, laughter, for sure. Like uh, my friends and I, we're very silly. We're all... You know, mature older adults with kids and businesses, etc. But we're ridiculous when we hang out together. Good. Um, so we're all going to live long because we just laugh, right? Right. So yeah, it's pretty normal. And and then my my daughter, um, so my son Gavin and Issa, my daughter-in-law, have beautiful Raya, my first grandchild. So that so of a lot of time is, is like spent being focus grandma. central, right? right? Because she's just so precious. Uh, so they're reminding me of how great. Like how awesome it was to be a young family and raise your kids and how important your neighborhood and community is. So I think you're just remembering joy, the good right? parts of it. The good parts of Cause it. Because you get and to drop Rhea yeah. off and yes. then go to sleep at night, that's right? True. I mean, that's kind of the key thing. The tough parts, it's a nice, I feel that my job is to remind them that they're doing a great job right. and that this is just such a short period of time. It doesn't oh, feel, feel so that long, way though. when you're living it. It feels so long. But once it's done, you're like, I can't believe it, right? So that's a great reminder for me with them and then my daughter Emma is my uh like I'm really inspired by her and her uh advocacy her advocacy her personality her her gumption her oomph right so I she gets me to do the brave things like right. doing the edge walk at CN Tower, Tower yeah. right going to the blind the it's tasting the the restaurant the where you eat I forget what it's called it was fantastic where you're eating in complete darkness, darkness yeah. right? And that's where you appreciate. You don't you don't understand when someone who cannot see how do they live right. their lives, right? You, if closing your eyes doesn't do it, right? Um, so she gets me to do all those things when I learned to be a skier and do like serious downhill mogul things. That was Emma, right? Like oh, all okay. those. So I mean Gav too, but certainly I admire. I, I really enjoy hanging out with Emma, and it's. She lives in Ottawa, so it's a little bit, it might be because she's so far away that I, like, every time she comes home, I'm like, yay. Yeah, let's like, catch let's up. Let's cancel everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emma's home, right? Now, she wouldn't buy it. She'd roll, like, hearing this, she would roll her eyes at me. And, you know, I'm always the butt of the jokes when we all are together. I, I love spending time with my uh, adult kids and their partners and right. family. So it's a, we're a solid. So we've solid heard, um, you mentioned just music very quickly, just out of curiosity. Uh, one counselor said the Beatles is a favorite musical act. Another one said Train. Who's your favorite musical 
group solo artist. Oh boy. So that changes all the time. Currently? Currently? Sure. I'm not saying they have to be current, but just right now. Well, you know who's you... steady? I love, well, Beatles, of course, right? I was in grade eight when John Lennon died, and that was, I had three other girlfriends, and we all used to play the Beatles at recess. Oh, man. <laughs> I was Paul McCartney. We, 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 right. we, needed, we needed cell phone cameras back then. <laughs> I know. Um, I like Great Big C. I like, um, oh, actually, somebody I just started hearing because of Raya. There's a singer called Christina Perry. Yes. Who I knew who she was. But I guess she has children. And so for each child, she has recorded these uh, Christina Perry, remind me, what was her big song? Was it? I think it's Jar of Hearts. Yes, okay. Yeah. Emma used to sing that song. So... She recorded these lullabies. Do you know who's the best version of that song, by the way? Who? Is Mark Holland. Of, of Jar, Jar of Hearts? Hearts. <laughs> yeah, and he's going to kill me for mentioning this, and I don't know if he'll make it. Yes! Uh, he just, um, he sings it in a very haunting way, because he's a very naturally deep voice. Right. So it's just like, uh, yeah, anyone he's, he's sung that song for in karaoke, they're just like, what, what is going they're on? Like, like why am I crying right heart. now? Yes. yes. <laughs> That's just, I had to throw that out there. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so she recorded these, like, lullaby albums. Okay. For, their, for her, her kids. Children. Right, right. So I've only learned them because of Raya, and that's sort of her, you know, playlist for bedtime or for relaxing or whatever. And they're beautiful. Like, of course. She's a good singer? Beautiful. Great singer. So I don't know if I have... I hear stuff. I forget stuff. It's when you're playing. Something will come on. I'll be like, oh, my gosh, I love that song. Right, right. And I'll say to the kids, who's that? I do like my kids' ability to interpret almost anything that I ask. Like, those weird... Non -seconders. Who's that song, that, that oh, I thing, see. like, you know that song I like? And then I'll do like a couple, and they're like, yeah, mom, it's this one, do, 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 right? So, so I love all kinds of music. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Um, so we've been on council for, um, I guess, six, six years, years and change yeah. now. Um, what are some key achievements that you're especially <laughs> proud of? So, you know, it's been six years, we may not have changed the world, though we're trying. Yes. What are some things that Lisa Bauer is especially proud of? Thank you for that question. So, um, yeah, there's lots of things I like going back because a year happens so fast. Right. Right. And, and moments happen so quickly where a heated or something really um, hot is in the on social media and the news around our water cooler for a couple of weeks. And you think it's everything and then it's gone. And yep. then six months later, you're like, remember that time we talked about something? So um, a, a few things. So um, it was in first term where a um, couple things. So I was uh, on the uh, accessibility advisory committee and we talked about how to, how to make Ajax a little more inclusive for everyone. So I helped introduce uh, the picture exchange communication boards, PEC boards. Which at is the a, parks. At Rotary Park. I think they are There's putting one at Audley. them in. Is there one at Audley? Mm -hmm. So, so those are the big boards with the pictures. So for nonverbal children or people who, or children or people, who have uh, difficulty communicating in a language way, they can point. They can point at pictures. So um, I was very, I'm very proud of that, and I know that some families are really getting good use and appreciate Ajax offering that, so their kids can play in the park too, as well as a smart park. Uh, down at Paradise Park that has a Biba playground. So, and that came as an idea for me because everybody is on their phones all the time. And when you go to the park, parents or kids are also on their phones while they're playing in the park. So this is a game where you scan a QR code at the park and it gives you um, these virtual like scavenger hunts oh, great. or activities that use the equipment. It's very interactive and I thought that's a great tool. It was I had seen it at another park so I was able to get it to a park in Ajax. I'm pretty proud of that. Um, community safety wise there's a, um, uh, something that just passed recently that's been staff have been studying it for a little bit. So for installing uh, solar lighting in pathways right. in neighborhoods, etc. So there's um, a pilot of one lighting system per ward mm -hmm. coming soon. So for us in Ward 3, it's just down the road here um, off of Andrea. There's a nice pedestrian walkway, so that'll have some lighting to just make it a little safer. Ward 2 and Ward 1 also have some coming. And then the other one, uh, which was around maybe a little bit 
uh, either during or during COVID or maybe a little after was again about accessibility and it was a different way. Yes, it was because when everybody was driving down to the waterfront to come to the water and it was just cars galore, packed galore, and not everybody could get that access. Right. So I was able to um, work with Durham Region Transit to get um, a bus route along the waterfront. Great. That made stops at Rotary, just here at Veterans Park, and at Paradise. Super cool. So it, it's, it ran for a couple summers. Uh, I don't think it, it's running anymore right now. Let's bring it back. It may come back. You never know, right? Because War Two doesn't know we have a lakefront sometimes. I learned that. Ajax which, stops at Costco. Yeah. <laughs> which is a good stop, too, yes. right? Yeah, Costco. It's the best. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this question is an odd one. Uh, oh. we'll, we'll tweak it a bit. So the question is, if you could describe your journey in Ajax Council in three words, uh, what would they be and why? Uh, let's do a sentence. If you could describe your experience in a sentence, what would it be? My experience as a counselor? Yeah. Or, okay. Whew. I, okay. I have learned that you cannot do everything. You, you really can't do anything by yourself. Um, communication and collaboration amongst council and with town staff and with key um, stakeholders, I guess. Uh, it, that's the best way to get it done. Anything you like, I guess it goes back to the volunteering and the serving, and um, that you, me, myself, and I, uh, good luck, right? But if you are part of a team and you really put forth a selfless effort because it's the right thing to do, um, you, you can get stuff done. And so I don't know if that is That's actually a sentence. That's a hell of a run-on sentence. That, <laughs> right? Dot, dot, dot. So I was an English colon, major who always wiped too many comments. That is a run-on sentence, young lady. I know, I was brutal for that. So it's a, that's a hard question. I should have... No, 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 yeah, 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 it. It, it, it's, can you do it in three words? Three words, my but, journey. Yeah. Eat, pray, Dedic love. Dedication. Okay, that's better. Dedication. Uh, experience. Experience. Leadership. Okay. Those are good ones. Um, so we have actually reached the end of our time together. Um, this has been always, oh, again, I always have a ton of fun with you, Lisa, so I appreciate that. Ditto, right back at you. What is the best way for listeners, residents, to connect with you on social media? Uh, to email. connect with me, I prefer email, lisa.bauer at ajax.ca. Uh, texting uh, is also good, or phoning. I take a little bit longer. This is something that I need to work on is... Um, I'm not great at responding quickly to phone calls. Not don't I know like it. <laughs> I know, but definitely email, texting, phone, social media. Yes, I will. I I see social media. I may not see it as quickly as others or respond as quickly, but I I try to see everything. But that's hard. Right, right, right. right. So probably yeah. So if you and do you remember your socials off off the top of your head? At at Lisa for Ajax. Yeah. Um, it's been a, a wonderful time as always. Uh, thank you, Lisa Bauer, uh, Councillor Ward 3 for the Town of Ajax. Uh, I'm thank your you. host, Sterling Lee. Thank you for a, another wonderful interview. And this has been another episode of TOA Talks. Thank you. you. Thank Bye. You.